This video is sponsored by Brilliant. There's a joke in physics that a cow is, at first approximation, a sphere. I mean, it's a three-dimensional object, it has depth, width and height, and it's got no sharp edges, so it's kind of accurate. But the main reason a cow is a sphere, to a physicist, is because a sphere is a really simple shape. Every point on its surface is the same distance away from its centre. You can describe it with one simple equation. And while the world isn't itself simple, if we pretend it is, we can learn so much about it. That's because making approximations about the natural world is how physicists are able to describe it using equations. Trying to describe an object like a cow or a spaceship exactly, accounting for every last tail and ear and docking port, would result in equations that were the length of an entire page and would take forever to solve, or maybe even be impossible to solve. And equations that can't be solved aren't very useful. So we look for corners to cut. As a physicist, you're trained to look for approximations, asking what information can we ignore about something that allows us to model it while still capturing the big picture? Is it nearly symmetric? Can we ignore friction or ignore air resistance? Things like that. Often this is inspired by magnitude analysis, estimating which effects are small enough to not be important compared to other effects, at least the first approximation. For example, in my own specialism, atmospheric science, the same equations are used to describe the way the atmosphere flows over the surface of the Earth and how a single droplet of water splashes on the ground. The only differences are the terms in the equation which can be safely ignored. If you're talking about the atmosphere, friction with the ground is a tiny force, while the effect of the Earth rotating is a large one. While for the water droplet, air resistance is crucial to the behaviour, and the Earth rotating underneath can be safely ignored. So a physicist will strip away all details and, at least to begin with, describe a cow as a sphere. By doing that, we can learn so much from our equations. We can approximately learn how heat moves around inside the cow, for example. But if we're talking about something more fundamental, like approximating a helium atom by only considering how electrons electrostatically interact with the nucleus and not with each other in a quantized way, our equations can help us approximately understand how helium absorbs and emits light, something that informs how we study the universe and its stars. The complexity in all these systems is obviously still there, and physicists are aware of it. And in fact, a lot of science is about trying to add increasing complexity back to physical systems that were simplified to make them describable in the first place, adding the tail back to the cow, and small effects like how vegetation changes with temperature and climate models. But it's worth stressing that without saying a cow is a sphere, an imperfect, simple description, we would never have been in the position to describe it accurately at all. Both in the sense that our descriptions need to start somewhere before you add the complexity, but also in the sense that if physicists insisted we only ever describe things perfectly, the most general equations of physics would never have been developed at all. We would never have been able to run because we never considered simply walking first. In a way, emitting information is the only way our human brains are able to understand and gain deeper information about our world. I love physics because it captures the essence of how something behaves, often with beautiful simplicity. Even if the maths isn't simple, like in the case of general relativity describing gravity, the concepts are. Our best system for understanding everything in the universe is based on the concept of ignoring as much as possible, almost like clearing your mind while meditating. Make it as simple as possible in order to take your understanding beyond the simple. I would never argue that there isn't beauty to be found in the details, but to me, there's beauty in functional simplicity. And in describing a cow as a sphere. This video hopefully looked pretty unique as a result of two bits of programming. The imagery construction was done by Michael Fogelman's primitive script in Go, and the images were stripped from stock footage, sent to that script, and recombined into a video by a program I wrote in Python. If you'd like to get started learning this powerful, versatile language, then there's nowhere better than the introductory course on Brilliant, who have kindly sponsored this video. 
Brilliant is a service that supports learning new concepts in maths, science and computer science by guiding you through expertly written hands-on courses on their website and app. Rather than just giving you a wall of information, Brilliant guides you step by step through a concept with interactive demonstrations and exercises. The subjects range from programming to physics, uncertainty to logic, appropriate for a wide range of ages and abilities. I've worked with Brilliant for years now, and I just wish it could have been around more years ago when I was learning to program. It really is that good, and crucially shares my philosophy to education, making it fun interactive, and a state where experimentation and learning from mistakes is key. To get started for free, go to brilliant.org slash Simon Clark, or click the link in the description. And the first 200 of you will get 20% off Brilliant's annual premium subscription. With thanks to Brilliant for sponsoring this video. Thank you for watching the video. I really hope, wait, hang on. Thank you for watching the video. I really hope that you enjoyed it. As you could probably tell, this one took quite a lot of effort and has actually been in the works for several months. So if you did enjoy it, please do share it with people that you think may also like it. And it really does help to like the video on YouTube and to leave a comment below saying what you liked or what you didn't like about it. The set's not finished yet, by the way. Uh, that's why this looks a little different. I'm in the new office, but uh, we haven't unpacked fully yet, so. Give me a bit of time. Here's some recommended viewing next, and if you're not already, please do subscribe to the channel to be notified when I make new videos. That just leads me to say thank you once again for watching. I hope that you took something away from this video, and I'll see you in the next one.